Keep coming back to three plays from the fourth quarter of that win that tell you a lot about this group. The first is the sack that Robert Quinn had that turned a 26-yard field goal attempt into a 39-yard field goal attempt that was then missed by a foot that kept the Bears within seven points to then go start that you know, game-winning touchdown drive in the fourth quarter. On that game-winning touchdown drive in the fourth quarter, they hit that pass to Darnell Mooney, a short pass. All of a sudden, he keeps his legs churning, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, breaks another tackle. Next thing you know, it's a 30-yard gain. And then late in that series, even before the touchdown pass to Jimmy Graham and the miraculous two-point conversion to Demir Bird, Nick Foles gets stripped, and the ball's laying on the ground. And another Bears loss is just sitting there, and Jermaine Effetti alertly jumps on that football, allows them to retain possession to make those final plays to win that game. And so I think what it does is it affirms the DNA of this group as a group that is going to sprint through the finish line of a disappointing season. It only counts for so much, obviously, but when you have that, when you have that push and you have that group of guys that are willing to give it everything they have until the season is formally over, it tells you a little bit about a core group of guys that can be part of what you want to build beyond 2021. Well, David Montgomery is definitely one of those guys. He had another game of 100-plus scrimmage yards. Khalil Herbert had himself a, a nice touchdown run there. And we've been looking forward for quite some time here to 2022. But when you're looking at that position, is that one of the, the, the running back position, one of those positions that the Bears don't have to worry about as much moving forward with what they've shown here? Yeah, well, when you're five and 10, you have to make sure that you're addressing every single position on the roster in some regard. But running back seems to be as solid as, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, as any position they have. And it has been really through Ryan Pace's entire tenure as a general manager. You remember he found Jordan Howard on day three of the draft, and he became a guy that ran for a thousand yards multiple seasons for you. Then David Montgomery comes in. Now Khalil Herbert seems to be in that mold as the guy that's going to take whatever role you give him and maximize his ability within that role. Now, you have to figure out a way to stabilize receiver. You have to figure out a way to stabilize tight end, offensive line, quarterback. It's the reason the Bears are in the state that they're in. But certainly that running back position has been a bright spot on offense. Well, the, the, uh, the COVID protocol numbers uh, fluctuate and vary as uh, weeks go by. As we visit here midweek, it seems like they're starting to get some guys back and especially seem to have been hurt defensively the last couple of weeks. Where do things stand defensively heading into this home finale. Yeah, Chris, well, as we talk, Akeem Hicks is still on that reserve COVID-19 list. That's another big loss for the defense, but the list as a whole has thinned out. I think the Bears are getting closer to as whole as they can be at this stage of the season on defense. Obviously, you're not getting Khalil Mack back. Obviously, you're not getting Danny Trevathan back, but you have this core nucleus of defensive players back with a chance to finish the season on a strong note. They seem a little bit more complete in that area. Last week, you raised our eyebrows with your prediction that the Bears were going to come out of there with a victory. Uh, look in your crystal ball for this week. What's going on? Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to quote uh, a former North Carolina basketball player, Melvin Scott, who I covered many, many moons ago, who said, I don't like to toot my own horn, but honk, honk. Right. I picked that win last week. I, I had the Bears winning by one point, And lo and behold, they won by one point. So I give myself credit for that. I'm picking another win. This weekend, we have uh, to understand, obviously, the Bears have uncertainty with what they're going to do at the quarterback position. But the Giants are coming to town promising to split snaps between Mike Glennon and Jake Fromm, right? And so if there's ever an opportunity to go out on a high note in your home finale, this is it against a, a, a Giants team that's really, really struggling. And so you got another Bears victory here in week 17. Finally, it's a, it's a very sad week for uh, all of us in sports media in Chicago, and especially those on the Bears beat as we lost uh, – ESPN Bears reporter, Jeff Dickerson. Um, you've been with him for a long time now on this beat and have developed a, quite a friendship and a relationship with him and his family. What can you share with uh, the viewers about what made Jeff so special? Yeah, thanks for asking that, Chris. First of all, I've, I've known Jeff since 1997 when we were both students at the University of Illinois. And so uh, our friendship has grown a lot in the nine years that I've been back on this beat. And we've spent a lot of time together, both in the room at Hallis Hall and on various road trips following this team around the country. And, and, and as you know, and as everyone in Chicago media knows, Jeff had a positivity about him that was both infectious and admirable through everything that he went through. Jeff's positivity towards his job, Jeff's positivity towards his wife's battle with cancer, Jeff's positivity towards being a father to Parker, Jeff's positivity towards being a friend. You saw it in all aspects of his life, just how positive he was. And that just left a lasting impression on so many people. You're hearing an outpouring of, of love and support for Jeff since his passing. It's a really sad day 
for all of us, but I hope everyone remembers that upbeat energy that Jeff brought to every room he was in. And hopefully we can all sort of use that to channel that forward because that's what uh, Jeff was all about.